All right, Bill Cosby. <laughs> oh no, yeah. dude! You ready to go? No, I don't want. I don't want to start like this. You bring any quaaludes? That, I don't, that wait, shirt. Oh, dude! That shirt, no. that shirt is Bill, man. Dude, I just got this. I really liked it. Am I gonna be attacked? Are you? Oh my god! No. Let me make sure my water's not dry. Look at the, but this is a good. I just got compliments. This is a good color. That is a good color. <laughs> it would look. It would look just as well on Bill Cosby. Dude, screw you, dude. He's like, like. No, I, I, mean, I like it. This... Let me guess. That was a thrift store buy. No, dude. This is. <laughs> this is like three hundred dollars. It looks used. I didn't spend three hundred dollars. It was on sale. I love that song, "Thrift Store" by Macklemore. <laughs> yeah, dude. I thrift shop, whatever it is. That is a good one. He's got yeah. some great lines in that. What was it? Uh, that jacket he had with the. Wasn't it like with the big fur? The big fur, yeah. yeah. But um, I've always wanted like a big fur jacket, but with the with the, like the bear hood. <laughs> you mean like actual bear head? Yeah, or a wolf head. Wow. Like any kind of just like a hood though. I don't even don't know if it's... they sell those in California. That'd be like you'd get arrested for that in California. Dude, okay, so let's let's uh, the topic today is going to be about <laughs> you making me dress around in this bear suit that we have. That's like. <laughs> 2,000 degrees. I wish we could bring it. You know what? I'm just going to show is, a picture. It is a sauna. Yeah, it's a sauna in there. The yeah. first time we used that bear suit, it was, uh, it felt really bad. We like had hired uh, these uh, ladies to like walk around with the bear. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Okay. And one, and, and one of the, so there were three ladies walking around. Two yeah. of them were like park rangers. It was at a wine tasting, which wine, the people that put wine tasting on, they fucking hate me. Um, <laughs> So we always do shit like this. So okay. we had two girls dressed as rangers walking around with this like seven foot bear, but it was this like five foot lady that was inside the bear suit. And every time she took the head off, she was just drenched in sweat. I mean, she like, she was a great sport about it. I had, had a blast. Um, everybody's like taking pictures with it. It was all like branded and everything. It was, it was pretty funny. Yeah. You, okay. So just a little like insight on this. Cause I, I think this is really funny but you you got like this full-on bear suit sabina can you throw me the bear head please maybe we can uh <laughs> <laughs> it's on display in the office right um i think the head will give an idea but it's like a full suit i mean yeah oh i'm, I'm wearing it yeah dude we'll just put it on just for a look for the people watching because like the i mean it's pretty this realistic. is just the head Oh my god! And we'll show. We'll let's. We'll put up in post, like, uh, so you get like a visual of this thing. But, like you said, what's the height of it again? It's like seven <laughs> feet, all in it. Okay, remember last time when you were doing the ep whole episode with those like huge sunglasses on the like? Can you yeah. do this the whole? The I don't whole know. I'll segment? tell you when I when I start to get hot. Okay, it's fun. So, um, this 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 was been around, but you brought this in when uh, with for Naomi, like you just said. Yeah. Right? And it was to... <laughs> I wish you guys could see this. I'm just talking to... This is a huge bear head. Um, but anyways... Only you can prevent forest fires. Yes. So this was like... Okay, so for promotions. But what I think is funny is... At the time, these... Because this, this was like food and wine event, right? Yeah. And they, they were like really pretentious. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. But they didn't have rules against it. No. But after you did that, didn't they make a rule... They've made a lot of rules because about, of you about shit that I've done. Yeah, because of you. Yeah, but that's that's the fun of it. We were like just taking. I mean, honestly, it was. Uh, I was looking at like what is the spirits world doing? Yeah, because spirits gets away with everything, and so yeah. I was like, why can't wine have fun like spirits? And we just started doing you know crazy stuff, and uh, and and it it brought a lot of attention to our table, our brands. Um, and I think just kind of enlivened it. So while the organizers of the events may not have liked it and tried to put rules around it, we'd always like find some other way to do it. But all of the patrons there, everybody that was there tasting, like loved it. It was just entertainment. I, I do want to also add that like when I first was sorry about four years ago, I was like, oh yeah, like this suit's awesome. I took that bear suit down to LA because at the time it was like the cool thing to do was like the LA had all those walls, those painted that. walls. Yeah. It was all about the wall, right? Yeah. Like tag the wall and like whatever. And so I took it and I was just like, I'm going to hit up all the walls. And so the wall is like, you know, all around like on Melrose. 
they always had a lot of people there just taking pictures of themselves in front of it, you know. And, dude, I walked around that bear suit, and I got handed, uh, like, puppies. I got handed <laughs> uh, babies. No like, <laughs> if they didn't ask, like, I was, like, because, like, you know, I go, like, full theatrical. Like, yeah. I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a thespian. <laughs> so, yes, uh, you know that, right? <laughs> Okay, so I was like no talking, just kind of like all like Disneyland, like maybe, and I had uh, Veronica was with me, just kind of like monitoring because in that thing you can't really see that well. So sometimes I didn't even know what I was being handed until like I kind of was like looked down, and the puppy was like fine. I mean that was like cute and stuff, but when it was a baby, I was like, dude, these paws, like I can't like grip this baby, Ooh. like I don't want to be. Involved. Where are the parents? Like they, they, they're like. You know, ten feet away, just snapping pictures. Of so me. they're doing it just for a photo op. Yeah. And you could be like some crackhead that is, you know, who knows into what's human in that trafficking. S- no. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't know or care. And then, and then also, and then last was like, um, this couple like had just gotten engaged. They were doing like their wedding photos out there, and then this, and then the wife was like just like attacked me basically was like jumping all over me and grabbing me. And then like the husband was like taking pictures. And I was like, V like you got to handle this, <laughs> but we got those pictures. Yeah. I bet that I'm in their, their wedding album. Ah, well, that'd be cool. Hey, but anyways, Big so, Bear. very so, California. Yeah. Yeah. It's very hot, but I, I will say that lastly, getting out of that thing must've been kind of scary. Cause I had to do it like, I did on the side of the car because you get out and you're all like sweaty, like just like kind of like dripping out, like coming out. It looks like it bur- the bear is giving birth to like some human, you know. It's just like if a you know, young kid like, sees that, they're like, Fuck like the, like alien, just yeah, like, yeah, just like, like, it's like mucus like, dripping off of you. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know where we just went. That was that was something good though. All right, All so right. we're talking about. We're going to be just talking about supporting, you're supporting a cause, you're supporting what you believe in, you're putting positive energy out there, and you're rising above the radical expectations of some of these, I, I kind of think it's like um, negative Nancys, Yeah. you say? So this is a good, a good topic because uh, I think we all, in one way, shape, or form, believe in giving back whether that's in a small way to your community yeah. or to a large national organization that you believe in, all that stuff. But what I've, I've found on social media is that whenever we do something uh, that correlates to a, a something that people are tied to ideologically, right? So uh, yeah. patriotism with the 4th of July, uh, pride um, for LGBTQ, et cetera, uh, anything like that, that if you're not making it publicly known that you're supporting those uh, those organizations financially, then there seems to be like this big reaction from a number of people. But it's like kind of like they're they're coming across as virtuous, but also forceful and the assumption is that you're not actually supporting the cause. And so they're kind of like gaslighting in a way. Yeah. And I've always believed that giving back is, like I'm, I'm not Jewish, I'm not religious really by nature, but I love the way that the Jewish culture looks at how to give back to your community. They call it sadaka, And they believe that you give back regularly and you don't talk about it. Like it's not something, it's just something you do. But on social media, we'll, we'll get people being like, Oh, you guys aren't actually doing anything. You're just trying to capitalize upon a marginalized community and whatever else. And it's like, no, we actually do shit. We just don't want to talk about it. So, and now we're kind of forced to talk about it, which is fine with me. So, starting in 2003, I think, um, we started doing uh, breast cancer. Uh, so, yeah. donating to research for breast cancer. I'd lost a colleague uh, that, that I learned a ton from to breast cancer. And, uh, and so... Started doing that, but not publicizing it. Um, that was just something we, you know, have done every year since. Um, and that was uh, for our, so our rosé, portion of our proceeds go to that. Uh, and then, you know, more more recently even, the one that brought this up was really our pride pack. Um, so we did this beautiful pride pack. It was, you know, all of our Bell Gloss wines um, in the rainbow colors and all put into one pack. And it turned out to just be 
beautiful, and I think it was a really thoughtful design and um, great quotes on the inside of the box and all that stuff, and, and it was a ton of fun to create and to show our support visually by putting that package together and putting it out in the market. Um, and it was immediately like everybody's like, you guys are just capitalizing on this. And it's like, no, I mean, yeah, we're in a, we're in a business. We do want to make money, but we are giving back. And so yeah. a portion of those proceeds go to the Trevor Project. Um, and then we also have our drag brunch at Avow, the restaurant. And uh, those go to a, a local organization. Um, and so we're doing both kind of the, the national thing and the local thing um, in, in support. But it's, you know, at the same time, I'm like, I'm kind of frustrated that we even need to be talking about the fact that we are giving back beyond just the support of putting our, you know, putting our product out there in, in support of a community. Same thing with our, our, our Patriot pack, right? Red, white, and blue. And, uh, and so that, that's something that, you know, it's, it, yeah, we give back, but I think part of it is, is us just showing our support. Yeah. Like I, I, I want to agree though, too. It's a, it, it's a beautiful pack. And I think, um, for one, you know, with the Bell Gloss brand, you, I mean, that's very personal to you already, right? Yeah. I mean, the origin of that with um, with your grandma and the creation of that and having that signature wax. And when you choose to express um, your love and support um, at a special time to be able to switch out that wax and do these colors, because it's not like you have these colors on hand, right? And to change up your the you know the whole, whole organization of things and the production of yeah it. yeah i mean oh it's definitely think... a special i mean it's a it's a it's a specialty pack it takes quite a bit longer like i'd say to the tune of like 10 times longer yeah to, to do one of those packs than it does to do a regular case um but uh but yeah so i mean it's it is something that we will set up and break down and you know try to you know continue doing those um, but, uh, but yeah, that, I, I agree. I mean, it does take an effort, but it's worth it. I did see something too with the, also with like the, uh, red, white, and blue. Um, when I saw something come out like that, then you get like comments like, are you supporting the veterans? And, um, well, first of all, my dad is a, you, you know, my dad, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, did two tours of Vietnam and he, he loves that pack. And I think it's just kind of like. Sometimes too, it's like, yeah, I think it's in support of everything. It's in support and being like proud of our, you know, our country and yeah. and showing that love and everything. And that um, I think it's great to just, it, I don't, I just think it's like great to express those things without, like you said, trying to connect or or say we're we're do we're donating this amount or putting like a money. But it's like, why can't you just be like, I. I'm proud of our country, you know, like America. This yeah, is and a, well, I also just day. don't. I don't understand why people feel like they have the authority to tell you what you should be doing, right? Yes. Like, they don't have that authority. We we do what we can and want to do, and they have no say in it. Yeah. So I like they should just, you know, if they if they want to do it themselves, then go ahead. If I'm not supporting a cause that you believe in, then that's that's fine. We support the causes we believe in. Yeah. Um, it's it's everybody's personal choice, and that's the beauty of us being privately held too. It's kind of like yeah, we get to focus on the stuff that really means something to us and give back in a bigger way to those communities. So I mean, what I'd say to the people that want us to give back for whatever their cause is is go be successful and make your own money, and then give back your money to your cause. <laughs> <laughs> it could be any cause. Well, like, yeah. 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 I mean, we're doing. God, what do you have? Probably like, I think we're up to like six different things we're doing that we're passionate about. Yeah. Trees, um, obviously all the wildfires in California and, and Oregon, uh, planted over a million trees. Um, we're doing No Kid Hungry. Um, I'm a huge supporter of farming and, uh, and, and that ties into No Kid Hungry. And so we're doing, I think it's like nearly one and a half million uh, meals for kids. And then all the other stuff we do on the, the specialty pack. So yeah, it's, it, it feels good. It's just bugging me that people are like thinking that they can be that, you know, righteous and being like, you, you know, and the, the assumption is that you're not doing anything. It's like, where did the positivity go? You know, it seems that 
you're gonna just get people kind of picking apart every kind of positive thing that you do. What I love about uh, what you do is you just continue on, and you're like, you know what, this is a great thing. There's a lot of people that love it. But you get it at all different ways, right? Too. So we put out a pride pack. This is what people get. Like people are scared to just walk out their front door because of shit like this. So yeah, you. I mean, seriously, it's like. You put out a pride pack. You're donating back to the the or donating proceeds to the Trevor Project. Um, you're not talking about it, but you have this beautiful pack. Then you're getting people saying like, "You guys aren't doing anything other than capitalizing on this." Then you got the other people that are just bigots and assholes, and they're like, "I can't believe you're doing this with your your brand. I'm never buying Bell Gloss again." And you're like, "Why don't you go fuck yourself?" <laughs> <laughs> if you're if you're living like that far back, then we don't want you buying our product. Um, and and then you have people that are supporting it. The vast majority yeah. support it, which is a positive thing. But the fact that like people just think that their opinions matter, it's like, come on, we're doing this for like our good as well as the community's good. And if you guys don't like it, then I mean, yeah, I guess get on the internet and complain. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. You, that's all you can do. <laughs> and that and that's what we continue to do is is rise above the haters. Rise above them. <laughs> And we're going to keep doing it. I actually think it's like we just keep doubling down on the haters over and over. That, yeah. That, that's the best way to just you disregard them, but but do it in a positive way. You're just yeah. like, like, oh, yeah, well, we'll we'll talk about whatever your question is. But you always have to rise above and do it in a positive way. Respect them in a way that they'll never respect you. And that's what just eats them up inside. That's why they have black souls. <laughs> that's why they're going to die early. We're going to fight you with love. <laughs> We're going to care bear stare. That's true. Yeah. That's it. I like it. So business wise. Yeah. If you got to, if you want to sell your shit, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're lucky we get to do all these fun things, these specialty packs and that kind of stuff. But like it all takes groundwork. Yeah. And wine travel, not just for wine, like enjoyment. Yes. But like business travel. The hustle. Yes. Yeah. It. It's uh that's something worth talking about because like, I mean we've done a couple events together, we travel for leisure and business together. Yep. And uh, I mean, you always find a way to make it enjoyable, but there are like a couple of life hacks too you got to get in there. Um, because there was a time I was like fifty percent of my life I was traveling, and I absolutely yeah. hated it. But um, we're you know getting out there, spreading the word about the brands, uh, meeting you know, psalms and consumers and whatever um working with distributors all that stuff and and there's some excitement and fun with that but it is a grind like you're out there and it's just like because here's the, here's the issue with the wine world you're almost gonna have a dinner like every night with people mm -hmm. generally trade or or wine dinners with consumers um and then you're generally also going to be starting early because you got to get out you know be at the distributor by like seven thirty eight, and then get everything ready and then go go out and hit the market and so uh, it adds up real quick, like three days in, and you're like, "Yeah, dude, I think I'm gonna die." <laughs> Where's the life hacks on on that? Because I'm saying, first of all, like when you're doing something like food and wine, you got an event three days, right? And it's like you're also trying to maximize your time there. Yeah. And then you have like your or meeting up with people in between that, and then there's always like a dinner or something at night. And like you said, then you're then you're waking up and doing it again. So I'm just like, that's how do you how do you do that? You try to go in with the perspective of like, I'm not going to eat everything on my plate. I'm not going to drink every glass of wine that's in front of me. And you know sometimes you break down. You just can't handle it, and you end up doing it. And you feel like hell. Um, but uh, like, but do no. you do like multiple breakfasts and like or multiple lunch? Yeah, you do like double lunch. Yeah. <laughs> when you, when you show up, when you show up like for your second five, lunch, like okay. five meals in a day. Okay, like <laughs> if you sh if you're doing like three lunches in one day, when you show up to your third lunch, do you kind of like act like it's your first lunch? Like, yes. Is it like a yeah. You do. Yeah. It's so <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And then they're like, you have to have the burger. And you've like already had like a steak and I've like I've, one burger already. I've gotten good. I used to be pretty bad at. I got. I've gotten good at like just eating like a little bit, like a bite. Yeah. Of, of each thing. Um, but what I love is, like, if you just do family style, like, convince everybody at the table. So you got a group of oh, 10 or yeah. whatever. And you're like, why don't we just throw a bunch of things on the table and then we can try different wines with different, you know, 
items. Um, and it'll start off with like whatever oysters and octopus yeah. and move up to steak. Um, but that always works well because then I can actually get away with looking like I ate. Well, <laughs> but then I'm also able to talk more. So that's like, cause yeah. you know, if, if they're asking questions and I don't need to worry about like actually sitting there and eating for like five or 10 minutes where I can just be like a nibble here and then go in. So this guy, his name is Leon. Uh, he works for RNDC. So one of my first wine dinners, probably in like 2002, 2003. And, uh, and he sat next to me. I was at like Papa's Brothers Steakhouse down in, I think it was Houston. And uh, great steakhouse. And it was early days. And so doing this wine dinner, there might have been like 50 people there. And Leon sits next to me and he's like, let me give you a tip about this industry. <laughs> I was like, I'm up. All for it, Leon. What's up? He's like, uh, he goes, every time they put a plate in front of you, only imagine eating half. <laughs> I was like, mm, okay, we'll see where that goes. Took me a while to understand. Like, yeah, this guy was onto something. Uh, he's okay. still in the business. He's doing awesome. He's a great, great guy. But uh, he just he knows a lot about it. And uh, yeah. Well, actually, I was gonna. Um, so it's talking about the the travel part of it. So when you were traveling, so what? That was uh, two thousand fourteen, right? When it first started. What copper cane? Yep. Yeah. And so that's when you were like traveling a lot. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, and 19. COVID is what stopped it. And I'm so yeah. happy COVID stopped it. Because, like, COVID made I me realize, like, needed... I don't need to be out there all yeah, the time. Yeah, I think you needed to stop, dude. But you do learn some good life hacks, like yeah. how to pack. However many days you're gone, bring two extra pairs of socks and underwear. So if you're going to go for two days, no, because I yeah, was thinking about this. Four. Yeah, like, what, you know, the, the bring, saying like... is, like, like you're going like to poop yourself. <laughs> no, that's not. If I, no, no I mean, it's just a worry. saying. No, like, you know, actually... I haven't reached that point in my no, life yet, Chris. I, no, I'm saying, like, it's, like, it's a saying. You know, like, it is, we've been uh, talking about this. You know, we're going to have, we're going to have an episode just about sayings and what they mean. But it's, like, pack like you're going to, like, you could like you, poop yourself. Like you might shark. I'm going to, that... yeah, sh you know what? <laughs> I'm going to, can we remove this? Oh, wait, we're going to keep it. Oh, great. No, I, just like... for the record, though, I don't poop myself. Just a saying. Go ahead. The I obvious digress. stuff, look at the weather. I digress. Bring an extra <laughs> pair of clothes for, like, whatever it is. Like, you gotta, you gotta have, like, extra, because something might happen. You gotta, you know, like, go to Florida in the middle of summer, and you might need, like, three pairs of clothes a day, because, like, yeah. if you're outside, it is miserable. And you wanna, like, show up to a dinner all sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, okay. Yeah, and then, but, but don't, just don't overpack. Like, that's, that's, you know, you just wanna have, like a hundred and twenty percent of what you need. Call do, that. do you um, do you have one of those uh, airplane pillows? You know, like the neck one. Yes, I got a great one. So whenever I'm like traveling, yeah, I have that with me, and I always wear a hat. And uh, and and a hoodie. So like, when <laughs> you, I'm, you always when wear I'm, a hat. I know it's not like and a hoodie. A, yeah, like, like what Timothy McVeigh. Yeah, well, you like <laughs> so, you look suspect, bro. Like. Yeah, I look, I, it sounds do like you, I'm a suspect, yeah. Do you also plan, like, a good amount of time to be at TSA? Because I guess you're going to be there for a while once they see. <laughs> once they see you. You just come up with your neck pillow so, already on. And everything. Over, like, glasses. Uh, no, sorry. So the hat and the hoodie. Yeah. It's all about, like, just being able to pull that hat down, lay back. Yeah, dude, because, like. And then and the hoodie, too. You can, like, just, you know, you could, you could black yourself out. If yeah. you don't have window control. There's always the one asshole always that will open it up. It's like you know, within two rows, you got like one person just like open the whole time. You're like, come on, man, like, can somebody please tell him to put that window shade down? I mean, we know it's not their like. It's a lot of times is it's not their first flight, right? Yeah. Like they've seen, they've looked out there before. Yeah. They know what they're gonna see, <laughs> but they just want to check one more time. Like, Maybe there will be like the gremlin on the wing or something. Is that Kansas again? People are trying to sleep like when it's yeah. Uh, yeah, I get that. So you have that. <laughs> Why aren't the lines on the ground like they are on the maps? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Uh, etiquette on planes, okay? Ooh. Can we talk about that? Yeah. Because, I mean, like, first of all, you got the issue with, like, you got somebody next to you you don't know. Ooh, etiquette. And I've got, like, pretty Clean big shoulders, so, like, yeah. I don't want to be sitting there like this the whole time, like, all crunched up. So you got to, like, just make it loud and clear. Be like, all right. You guys, you guys get that one. I get this one. You get that one. Dude, bro. No, look. 
Okay. But now, what do you do? You just like solidly sit down and like put your elbows. Let's on Let's see the this right now. If you're sitting in the middle seat, you get both armrests. I think okay. it's a courtesy okay. that you should have that because it sucks being in the middle. Now look, I get that you could be like, well. You know, was it like you just didn't plan right? Or is this on you? Is this just like... But the thing is, is I think politely, like, I will allow the middle person to have that armrest. Because, like, either you got the window or you got the aisle. Yeah. So you get to kind of, like, you can just, like, lean. You should be chill. Right? I agree with that. Yeah. But also, just but put the window shade down, dude. That is that is the one that bugs, bugs me the most. But I have been in the middle. And someone did not abide by those rules. And I did, <laughs> I did the, I like to do the thing. Let me guess, did you do the fake fall asleep thing? Yes. <laughs> Dude, it's That's so great. fun. Have you ever done the I fake fall that. asleep? So I, what I do is I, I get, <laughs> I get the arms in all tight. Like, so I actually had one of them, but you get, you get it there and you, and you start pressuring up against the armrest because you want to build up the force. <laughs> and then you just like, and you go, ah. See that? Did you see that? It <laughs> just like that. snapped yeah. out. I, I just like squirm. I didn't do the, the loaded pop. I just like, you know, like, and then you go. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's so natural. <laughs> I like that. That was, like, like, was a good theatrical presentation. Yeah. Okay. What about the uh, air? Do you actually use the air? Yeah. Or do you feel weird about that? Because I know some people don't like the air. They think it's like, because it's like recycled. I definitely use the air. So you yeah. like, well, you, cause, oh, sorry, air, I'm sorry, I didn't mean, all the I air wasn't is, trying to be. All the air is recycled. Yeah. Okay. It's like, yeah. It's not that I forgot about your condition of the <laughs> specular light. <laughs> that was kind of insensitive of me. Can we just, I'm sorry about that. Of course you use the air. You use, you use okay. two airs. Uh, yeah. You do. Right? It's okay. No, it's all right though. Everyone's, dude, look, I got an autoimmune, but we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> why am I, why am I bringing that up? I should have. I don't, you because you you want to be <laughs> you're self victimizing right now. <laughs> you know you want some of the attention put back on you. <laughs> Such a little bitch. Oh my god, that's my actually that's, that's my autoimmune disease is self victimizing. <laughs> <laughs> it just won't stop. But I, you know my body can't control it. It's just it's how I was born. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, so traveling. Okay, what other is there any other kind of editing? Well, okay. I, I mean, I don't want to get... Yes, I will. Because this happened the other day, but like elevator etiquette. Oh, yeah. You know, we should just fucking talk about it. I could talk about this Go, all day. Go, let's start. Yeah. Uh, but elevator etiquette, okay? You get in... Okay, you get in the elevator. You're pushing it to your floor. Elevator door opens. You should be able to get out first mm -hmm. before people are coming in. Yes. Why are people coming in preventing people from getting out first? Don't you think that's just rude? It is very rude. Very selfish. How do we change this? Because it uh, keeps happening. I got, a, I got an idea. What? Put, like, the glasses on. Like, just just pretend that you are uh, visually impaired. And, like, have a little stick, like a cane, and just, like, start whacking people. <laughs> like, just... <laughs> Teach him, I teach him real quick. Like, I mean, or, or you could just barrel out of there. Maybe try, you know, turn your back to the door. Yeah. And and just walk backwards. Oh, my gosh. Have you seen that? Like, if you just go into the elevator and you don't face the door, but you face the, the other side of it. <laughs> have you ever done that with a group of people? Yeah. People freak out, man. They think something's about to go down and you're just facing a different direction. Yeah, imagine me with my hoodie yeah. and my hat and my glasses on. Yeah. <laughs> walk in there, they'd be like... But wait, are you? Was, Somebody's gonna get murdered today. Also with your with a cane now. You got now with you, a cane. You got now a lot of cane. you got yeah. a lot of tools, but that that could get you through through there. So, with the traveling part of it, what what's like, what's the coolest place? And if you have multiple, it's okay. But like outside the country, because um, I've like been on or you know been there as watching you do a lot of lives. You get like a lot of questions about different varietals um, in different uh, countries yeah. and stuff like that. But what's one of your favorite places outside the country that you've traveled to? For wine or, well, not for wine. I love Switzerland. Like that's just I've like never been to Switzerland. Beautiful country. Tons of fun stuff to do. It's just gorgeous. You know, my mom's Swiss air. Italian. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, like that, that part, like around that in the Alps right there. Yeah. It's beautiful. 
Uh, so I'd highly recommend that if anybody's going to Europe, that's like a must, a must, a must do. Uh, for wine, I mean, I think champagne is maybe my one of my favorites oh. out of the country. Um, just from a food and wine scene, like they're they were awesome, but um, so kind of like what you know you'd expect, right? You go to wine country and cool caves, and you know it's it was it was really a great experience. Most unique, I think, was uh, uh, Baja California, Mexico. Valle de Guadalupe. Oh. That place is like, I, I, I mean, it's so early on in its growth as like a wine region. It's still pretty well known. The problem is it doesn't really have na international recognition. It's like everybody in Mexico drinks like all the wine they pretty much make. So like it doesn't get exported. Some of it does, but not very much. But there are some really good wines down there. Um, oh, cool. I've, I've been to, like I've, when I went to, I went to San Felipe, Baja. Yeah. But I, that I was like in Boy Scouts. Ah. I was like, you know. So you weren't tasting wine. I was wine. young. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't tasting wine. It was there, like, there are some like really, really good wines down there. And the food scene is also awesome. But it's also like, you know, a spin on like Mexican seafood, I guess. So you'll find like some street stands too that are yeah. just pumping out like the most amazing seafood soup. Like best I've ever had. Like smoked seafood soup and like it's just awesome. Pairs well with wine. But they're doing like interesting varietals down there too. Of course they're doing stuff you'd expect like Cabernet and Merlot. But some of the Nebbiolo that I've had out of out of Mexico is really good. Some of the Rosés also. Like they've they've gotten that down. Even Chardonnay. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. and you. I, I mean, wish we had more of them up here in California. I mean you lived in Mexico as well. Yeah. For a while. Yeah. In a trailer in an rv in an rv an RV. <laughs> rv yeah i drove an rv down there <laughs> but farmed, did... i farmed table graves yeah first thing i did was i parked the rv and dug myself a septic system dude i was yeah was i it. mean that would that, and was... then that rv stayed parked there <laughs> for like a year <laughs> first thing i did first <laughs> was i dug a septic system i, I don't know about you but i don't like I would... cleaning out the rv toilet system is not very fun I yeah I mean <laughs> I had I had I would, I this I got this one story. So oh, this is gonna be good. Okay, so you got like you have you ever cleaned We're one of those out? Poop again. What? Have you ever cleaned one of those out? Like where you got? No, I haven't. So there's like a there's like a oh like, there's like a blade no, you like a, yes a handle yeah, yeah, yeah. to open up the whole thing. Of course, there's like a screw cap yeah. on the top and all that. So that's like the fail safe. But um, so I the septic system was all done and everything and everything was set up. But there was a clog somewhere in the line. Okay. And so, and I couldn't get it from the top. And so I had to like, you know, unplug the piping, un unhook it that was connected to the, the septic tank. And uh, and so I'm like, all right, this is going to be a mess. <laughs> so I went and got like a wire hanger and like, you know, unfolded it. Yeah. So I could like put it up there and figure out whatever the clog was and knowing that like I couldn't do anything until I pulled that out once it started coming yeah I had to like pull it out and push that valve in um and uh and so I go put like a full like hazmat suit on yeah like what you'd wear when you're like dusting with sulfur you know so like mask full like everything <laughs> and so I'm out there and I'm just like pushing away at this thing and all of a sudden the whole tank just like dumps it was, I think I got pictures of it somewhere still. It was horrible. Oh, what was blocking it? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, were you like cool? I mean, like, I mean, you were wearing a suit, but like. I was not cool was, with it. Though. You, oh, you it were was, not? It was, yeah. I got on you. It was like everywhere, yeah. You got spray. You were like. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah. It's kind of, was it traumatizing? It was preparing me for kids. Cause... <laughs> Yeah, like I've seen some crazy handprints around there, and was in there growing up and stuff. You're like, was it like that? That movie was like the mom was like, is that poop or is that chocolate? She like tastes it. It's, it's chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> what if it was poop? I know. What if it was poop? That was a that was a classic one. Um, so for what for long distance traveling, we got like your top places. Uh, is there any uh, tips to add on for? Um, well, what's your, you what's like? your favorite place? Um, uh, still, I would say is Italy. 
Florence. Okay. Um, outside the country. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, dude, b- by far, it's, like, still, like, one of the... Bo- Actually, well, I uh, and Australia was really great for more recent, yeah. I guess, of a trip. Um, but, yeah, I think... Uh, they got everything that'll, like, kill you down there, right? Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> I, well, we've talked about this, too, where it's, like, you know, uh, the tourists come there and they're just, like, oh, I want, like, the wallabies or, like, the kangaroos. I want to take pictures and, like, it's, like... The feeling I got from, like, you know, the local Australians there was, like, dude, these are, like, our squirrels. Yeah. Like, that's gross. Like, you know what I mean? But they just, like, get a kick, <laughs> get a kick out of, like, watching people like myself <laughs> take a picture with a wallaby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, like they're, like, so gross. Tourists. Or, like, you know, like, get a kangaroo and be, like, can I just, can I sit in his pouch? Is that, <laughs> is that okay? Or, like, do you know what's in there? It's gross. Slimy in there, right? Uh, yeah, that's no. where the babies go. But um, but I was going to say, back to Italy is, is for wine, which was cool. Um, I got the opportunity to study out there um, a while back. But uh, the alcohol percentage, right? Like, because we were, you know, we were talking about in past episodes when you were messing around with uh, Gambit with like oh, yeah, 18%. High alcohol, yeah. But even like some, uh, you know, the Cabernets uh, being like 15.9 or whatever, yeah. you know. Um you, you, like they'll drink like uh, with Italian wine. You like when I went there, I actually brought along some of the California wine. It was just like blew them away because of with the alcohol percentage is a lot lower than yeah. is what they're usually. Maybe that's why too they can drink more of it. Drink more. Right? Well, they also oh. like drink like most of the day. Yeah. Whenever I, I went there, I've still got family in Italy, and I remember like during the day it was like they do a mix of more or less half and half. Red wine and sparkling water. Yeah. That was it. And then, like, during the night, then they just drink red wine. Because they have siesta. They do have we siesta. We need siesta. You get to get that nap in, <laughs> and that's how you're at the club <laughs> till 5, 6 a.m. No that is matter true. what, right? But they're taking, like, legit naps, multi-hour naps, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're not Because we were talking on, like, the last oh, episode, yeah, yeah, just, like, yeah, the 15-minute, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the power you know, nap. this isn't, like, the 10-minute power nap. They're getting some serious... They're, is... they're getting, like, two REM cycles in. I think. Wow. I think. Three hours. I don't even know what that means, two? but, yeah, solid. That sounds solid. Yeah. REM. That's me in the corner. Losing my religion. That's me in the spot. <laughs> like, lose... No, it's, like, rapid eye movement. You remember how, like... We loved that music, and now it's just... Uh, I listened to it, actually, just, like, in the last couple of weeks, and it's... Don't say it. It's trash. Really? Yeah. It's bad. Smashing Pumpkins. Smack... No, dude. Bullet with Butterfly Wings? Don't take that away from me. That, I'm taking it away. What? Well, fine. If you want it, I'll just give it to you. Tell me to my face that this is not good. The world is a vampire. Boom, 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 boom. The dream. <laughs> Still just a rat in a cage. My ears are <laughs> bleeding now. Okay, but anyways, Come I'm glad on. we took that tangent. Come on, really? But that was like back in the day when you really actually appreciate a buildup in a song. Okay? You're just getting all pumped up. If the attention spans now, shot. <laughs> you can't even have a buildup. You gotta come out of the gate. Like that the beat so drop needs it. to be within like the first 10 seconds. You, I, I saw, you know what, by the way. Thanks, TikTok. I, I saw you mosh to that song at like in eighth grade dance. Yeah, yeah, I probably did. Just saying. You Tough like, times. You Tough looked times like you were having fun. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> so moving, moving on from shitty music. Were you ever good at making paper airplanes? Yeah, I love making paper airplanes. Do you remember yeah. Micah? Micah Hope. Yep. Yep. He was like really into airplanes, but yeah. he was also really good at making paper airplanes. Like the kinds that would do like loops and yeah. flips and all that kind of stuff. So you're gonna make a paper airplane right now? Oh wait, are we? Yeah, go ahead, make it. I'm gonna do horrible bosses <laughs> while you work on your little arts and crafts project over there. This like is gonna. I might out. actually make one after this, and then okay, I'll, we'll see you. We'll have forward. a competition. Yeah. Okay, okay, but I do want to hear about horrible bosses. Okay. So let's let's get into it. What's our? All right. Here's here's the story. Okay. Again, anonymous because we don't 
anonymous. We don't we don't want uh, some sort of like Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing coming down on us, you know, like We do not want drama. <laughs> <laughs> I worked for a company where the husband wife owners started going through a horrible divorce. Our offices were located under their Napa home. The wife took a took up, up residence in the upstairs of the home. Every day there would be screaming fits and she would throw glassware against the wall as we were right below all the commotion. Uh, when her fits started, we would walk over to the tasting room building and hang out there until it ended. She started coming uh, after the directors and others uh, in the organization stating that we were siding with her husband and scream in our faces that we weren't loyal. <laughs> Girl sounds crazy. Yeah, this already <laughs> sounds... It sounds like it sounds like that dude made a good decision by divorcing her. <laughs> okay. Wait, so uh, we're still going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a lot here. It's going to be a lot to unpack on this one. Uh, she would then leave her guns in various locations when she knew we had events, and, and we would be using those areas. One day, I got into work. I was always the first one there. I had unlock, unlocked my office, but had to go back to my car for something. When I got to the parking lot, which was extremely small, holding about 10 cars and all gravel, I saw her sitting in her Jeep with the engine running while she was texting. I looked up and waved to her to let her know I was there, and instead of waving back, she revved her engine three times. Flex, right there, that's a flex. I shrugged it off and opened my trunk, and that's when she popped the clutch and sped past me so close that gravel hit my legs and I jumped almost into my trunk. Shaken up a bit, I called my husband to let him know... <laughs> Uh, what had just happened, and to make sure I wasn't going crazy. <laughs> and he told me to call the CEO and tell her what happened, uh, and to leave for the day. When I called the CEO and told her the story, she paused and said, Oh my God, she did that to herself and the VP of sales the week before in her Maserati. Whoa. She's like trying to like ruin Oy. people's cars. Dude, okay, there's, this is like attempted murder like a few times to... Well, it sounds or, like it's like retaliation to the employees and like, you know, spitting gravel up and trying to like speckle oh, their car. Oh, okay. Like she, I, okay. So yeah. it's like, you're not on my side? Well, I'm going to fuck with you. Oh, okay. Yeah, like one of those really but angry. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And they still, they're still going to work right now. Now that, yep, they're still, so <laughs> here we go. They're still showing up. <laughs> hoping the next day will be a little brighter. Okay. It was extremely hostile there when she was on property, so we got a lawyer and were successful in getting a restraining order from her to where she couldn't be on property during business hours. She retaliated by moving her even nuttier mother, God, this sounds like my ex-wife, <laughs> and housekeeper into the house, who then made it their sole mission to make our lives hell. They would follow us around any time we left the office and film us on their phones, sometimes getting right into our faces. Unfortunately, the wife won... Uh, when the business and the divorce um, and when I arrived to work the following day she was in the office she decided the restraining order didn't matter anymore <laughs> and when I mentioned it she laughed in my face that day they asked us to give them our keys computers and credit cards there were five of us that were in the order uh, we asked if we were being fired and she said no but they refused to give us our equipment back so we took that as we're being fired and didn't return I was never so happy to leave a job in my entire life. I still think the entire drama that unfolded would make for a great TV show or movie. I just don't want to relive it. Wow. I mean, there's like, I mean, like Karen crazy, like that middle-aged woman. Like, sometimes it just, something clicks and they just like go nuts. It is scorched earth. And, yeah. uh, and there's, there's like no, no winning. I mean, it happens to guys too, but like, man... I don't know. I mean, my perspective on this, well, first of all, what a crappy uh, way to manage or handle your business when, like, you get a, you get all the personal stuff into it, too. Yeah, like, it just would take a lot to show up at work, back at work. Yeah. At the beginning of that yeah. was already a lot of stuff we were like, wow, and to, I mean... That's some positive attitude right there or, or whatever uh, kept... You know, that person that keeps showing up on yeah. that work. I mean, like, after the car thing, like, that's, like, kind of, I mean, that's kind of wild. I, I think I first heard it as, like, I thought, like, were they trying to, like, hit, hit them? Hit the person? Yeah. yeah. But you're saying it was just kind of, like, a dangerous flex. 
of like revving the engine and like trying to shoot some dirt shoot or like up. scare them. I think it was probably to damage their, you know, to accidentally damage their car. Maybe crack a window. Yeah. You know, that kind of and stuff. And that's like, still, that's like, that's pretty crazy. It would like, I'm just trying to imagine, like, I'm thinking about I show up, right? And then I say, I don't know. I see you in the parking lot. And you like rev your engine and you just like driving like super fast and then like screech out, like hit some gravel crack like the car and then i mean it wouldn't be you but i'm saying like if if it was a different boss that like i didn't really know that well because if it was you then i would just like hop on your truck yeah and ride on the roof yeah yeah and be like banging on it and be like you pull over right now let's do this you know and we would uh we just go at it but um like we used to do you know just messing around uh <laughs> but in that case i would just be like why would you even show up don't you think that would, I don't know, that's tough. Yeah, tough. I mean, I think if I were to give any advice on this, I would say that, you know, while we all have the best intentions when we uh, get married, you got to make sure you have a plan on, like, what happens in the case of a divorce or in the case of a death. Um, because those things can be really difficult for businesses and the employees of the business. So, uh, you know, I mean, I at its like highest form, that'd be like a premarital agreement, right? Something like that. But it's kind of like, just so it's a plan. It can be equitable for both parties, but you got to know like what goes where in a worst case scenario. Otherwise, you're bound to have like some sort of crazy shit like that happen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, planning. Hope for the best, plan for the worst, right? Yeah. Those Oof. were probably scenarios that could have been totally avoided. And the guns laying around, that's... Uh, that's that's a weird one. I want, I, yeah, is that is that like also a flex? Is that also like, <laughs> hey, this is just a reminder. Yeah. <laughs> that if you side with my husband again, you might get shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It could be. Anyways, bad choice of decoration. I don't know. Well, All right. Good luck to them. We're at the flower shop. We're at the flower shop. Take it drop. What do we got today? All right, we're going spring today. Uh, just a little like, with a little fall vibe. Um, but this is really going to be like bright, fun. This is just something that'll brighten your day. That's what it's about. Okay, I like that. So we got we got our Gerber daisies here, which are always just a classic. Wait, did you say Gerber babies? Gerber babies. <laughs> Gerber daisies. Gerber daisies. I like that. Some chamomile. Cool. Make I'll tea see out of this one. Don't, don't ruin I like it. Oh, sorry. Okay. That might be the close. COVID. All right. What? I don't have COVID, dude. Don't <laughs> Whoa! Did you just cough? Hey! Oh, my God. <laughs> That's everything. All right. Now we got, the, uh, we got some Snapdragons, because these are always pretty. Yeah, and this is going to be our vertical element. And then just some filler, because everybody likes kale. Wait, so we're doing kale. You, you said something about my filler? Do you want to try some? <laughs> you can take a bite of it. I will. <laughs> All right. You know what this tastes like? Kale. Ah, uh, yum. So we'll, we're going to start with this. All right. We're going with our kale first. And these are pretty long little sprigs here. So let's make them happy shorter sprigs. So we're probably going to want to pull off some more just to get, like, right out of the vase. Always cut at an angle. Always cut at an angle. Remember, boys and girls. So we're cutting at an angle. We got the kale going in first. And it looks like... Um, I think I'm going to stick with just three of these. Three stems of the kale? I like that. That's, yeah. That looks like already like a good beginning. You can tell it's going to be yeah. good. I'm still tasting it. <laughs> like That is some strong kale. I know it's going to be a, a good... Wow. Add a few Very sprigs of chamomile. Let's see where that comes out. I think those were a little long. What do you think? Yeah, I think they'd be a little shorter. I'm learning a lot now. I'm, I'm You're like basically a professional. Uh, yeah, I'm becoming quite the expert. Learned a lot from you. So we might not even use all this stuff, but so we got kale and now cam chamomile coming in. Between. I like how these are yeah going in between. Okay, that. see. So you got like a three and three. 
This is good. And I like how you said it's like a, a spring, but also fall. Like, uh, it's like spring combination. Fall colors yeah. yeah. So it's springy into fall. I mean, you know, we skip in summer. They want to just keep this a little more delicate, huh? I mean, these are really, these are pretty. I want to keep these yeah. pretty tall and right in the center. But hold up, brush cut. Do you like to, do you use the, um, do you use the plant food? I do. Actually, that, that stuff really does work. Like, yeah. It really, uh, really helps preserve. They last longer. We just go with it. three. I feel like we're like in this like. Three, You're doing three, three, three. Three, three, three. So and, I just hold up on this. Wow, dude, that's crazy. That's like a. You know, three is my lucky number. And then we want these guys to just like rise above the chamomile, but also complement this nice thing. We get a little. Hey, three is my. You want to put some of these in? My lucky number. Yeah. We're gonna wrap these around. Um. You. Three is your lucky number, huh? Oh, you were listening. No. Hey, you tried not hey. to. <laughs> you tried not to. That's okay. All, all the bullshit comes out of your mouth. Okay. Okay. Gosh. There's another one for you, Chris. I think we're going with this three thing. Are we going to just do six of the Gerber dates? I think you could um, stick this one in here. <laughs> and that will... If I can just get it right in the middle. Can you... Sorry, do you want to let me... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Didn't mean to do that. There we go. Okay. What? Oh, what? I messed it up? Yeah, you messed it up. Okay, if you could be watching right now, I just Where did an epic symmetry? placement of this me, flower right in the out middle out of Jet Set. Okay. And that was like the monument of... Is that the one that made the floral arrangement? Well, it was. Should we do? I, mine was basically Beyonce of Destiny's Child, and now you just totally took me out of the equation, but that's okay because I'm going to be still more successful over on the side there. Was this yours? This one's all like kind of gimpy. What? <laughs> What's this one you were hitting me in the face with? Here, hold that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> you just took it out now? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to another one. I like yours. Okay. Well, right. see, there we go. Spruce these up a little bit after you already kind of ruined them. And Chris, there you have it. <laughs> a beautiful spring fall bouquet. It does look pretty nice. I do like the kale. I feel kind of like, you know. But then you could also just give someone like one single flower to let them know your appreciation. A sword bite? Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dude, it was very good. <laughs> All right, that's beautiful. Wait, wait, wait where's wait, the well, name? We have to wrap it. Okay, yeah, we're going to wrap it. We're going to name it. Got to wrap it. So. Okay, we're going to we're gonna wrap it. Are we going to wrap it right now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay so I got know. the power. These are my flowers. Don't you. Come on, we're going to uh, wrap is it. Is that you want to do? Oh, I thought we were doing a song. <laughs> oh, wrap it in the newspaper. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. You come up Get with it. Name. What's your name? For this one? Yeah, I, I don't want to like wrap not, this. Uh, you, know like what, dude? you know what? I'm not gonna name this flower bouquet that you like basically kicked me out of. I did. I had one. I had like one flower I was controlling, hey. and then you. My brother-in-law. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna buy in the paper. Oh, most personal with Eddie Clark. That's some local shit. <laughs> let's get that there. There we go. <laughs> Thank God that didn't work out. All right, we got to go with a name, a name on this one. Well, I want you to name it. I'm kind of like, you know, I'm a little hurt about what happened. We're using a uh, twist tie today. Yeah. No, wait, what do you think? What do you think? Come on. We got snappers in the front. How about falling back to spring? Falling back to spring. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Falling back to spring. Now, you make Let's a rap spring, about too. falling back to spring. Okay. That's it. Well, you, oh, while you wrap, okay. I will showcase. You know what, you even... there you Ding, have ling, ling. <laughs> jing, jing, jing. Now we're going to have to fall back to spring. But if you get me with a ring a ding, ding, I'll be like, hey, I need to sing. Oh, the world is a vampire. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Come on, man. Smashing pumpkins. Just say that you, you changed your mind.
All right, is that it? This one? <laughs> <laughs>